one of the questions that came up, and this is directed at anyone who can answer it, I think there was a lot of talk about data, people's attitudes to data, or their, their personal information, people's attitudes towards privacy, control, consent. But what about the utility? What about the thing that they're trying to do? Their personal information within a My Data model or whatever the model is, is really just a mechanism to achieve something, right? So is that where we should be putting our focus or have you know have we missed something? Well I really like the dancer wearing pop up there. Because I think that I didn't do that but someone did, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> because it really kind of summarizes the the way the moment that we are right now. Mm. And I think that uh, I'm asking ourselves about the utility and how this translates to other kind of uh, information or processes, it's, I think is a thing to focus right now on. And I don't know the translation, but I think that the, what we have is kind of a representation of ourselves, of our behaviors, yeah. and of our in, in intentions. And this, this links with the behavior, by the way. So the thing is how, how we do this kind of translation in different settings for different people. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, as a, as a, I wouldn't say even research, but as kind of a research and development uh, direction, I think this it could be a very important way to go. But I don't have the answer yet, of course. I don't know how we can map this, uh, this uh, idea of utility to actual representation of behaviors or attitudes or the passives or the yeah, I think it's basically all, all about like where we are in terms of trust ourselves. Like trust pop up like yeah. a number of times on, on the questions and, and apples and pears too. Yeah, like <laughs> when I heard someone talk about like the current state of like businesses on the internet and like Facebook stuff, like talking about like the wild west. This is kind of like it's not really come to like a, a state where like people accept it as it is. It's just like everything goes. That's kind of like been been the, the, the thing since the internet started, at least since it got commercialized. And I think it will at least take us a long time to get to the point where we actually trust um, that these people are not going to try to get a lot of money from us. So I think at least, you know, the, the assistant that I presented it is probably something that really fits well in the current context. Cool. So I think I, I agree with you, you know, like we, this is where we are at the moment. And I think even with a new D, GDPR, you know, this is, is something that, su that supports that. It's a step in the right direction, for sure. Something, any other questions have come up or was still? No, cool. Sarah, something that I was thinking about, and I, I think I saw it come up fairly early on, was um, like what was the value for <coughs> companies or what were the insights that companies got from engaging in the, the, the first MESINFOS program? And then if you wouldn't mind after that, maybe just talk a little bit about the key insights that, that you're taking from the initial research that you're going to implement in the new program? Okay. Uh, actually, uh, today the, the trust um, users and customers trust in companies is, is low. And companies are trying to find uh, ways to um, make their users and customers having trust and feeling uh, trust. Uh, towards them, and uh, when a company uh, shares the data, it is uh, a proof of transparency. It means that for people, for individuals, that the company is willing to do something in order to help. Them. And uh, this is actually why our partners join the um, the experiment because they think that if um, they allow individuals to have access to their data and to use them. This will make um, the customers feeling more confident, feeling a special relationship between the company and the, uh, the customers, and creating a new kind of relationship, which is based on, on trust and commitment, because there is a kind of dialogue that is uh, created between the company and the customer uh, around the personal data. And this is uh, very important for companies to have um, a special, if I can say, special relationship with their customers and users. And is that something that the companies that are involved in the new program, yeah. are they taking those learnings on board and trying to implement them from the get-go? Yeah, if we give more 
and we are more transparent, we're going to earn trust. Like, how does that work? How's it going now? I would not say if we give more, because it's not about the quantities, it's about just the giving to people, to individuals, the opportunity to have uh, access to their data. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we had so many learnings uh, during the first experimentation, and especially about uh, what was said, you know, like giving to people their own data, it has not. Uh, it hasn't this value which is actually uh, important for individuals. They want um, services, they want applications that help them in their daily life to, be, to uh, make better choice, to know more about them. So just giving them data is not enough. We need to, uh, companies need also to provide, of course, uh, useful services and applications that really help uh, individuals and feeds a need. Okay. I think, yeah, to me, like one, one of the main problems I see in, in my data, well, I'll call it a challenge, it's not really a problem, but it, it is that, like, I think it's, it's this trust relationship with like individual companies, it's important and it goes a long way. But I think what we're seeing today is that you have so many relationships, like, increasingly, when, when my data, I, I expect even more, like, just on your phone, you've got like, contact with a lot of companies and having having relationships like active relationships with all of them I, I think at least it's something to think about is this a, like is this a realistic thing because if we have like a hundred thing like companies that we have to relate to like on, on a personal level in some way I, I think we need some sort of assistant and that, that's at least the idea behind this uh, well, privacy assistant is one way of doing it you could think of other ways like having people who advise people on what to use and what but I think the user needs some assistance. I think that that's my main, I mean, opinion on this. That's where the research is pointing to. It definitely is, yeah. yeah. Pierre, and there's actually a really interesting question that's just come up by the looks of it, so we might we might come back to that. Pierre, from the time that you've spent in these innovation labs all around the world, and, and with where you are now as the lead designer at Quant, what are you seeing as the, the pathway? I know you've kind of articulated a vision, but what are you seeing as the pathway from, from where we are now to actually realising that value and having that out in the market? Mm, that's, that's a really good question. I think, uh, I think we're going to enable this vision through uh, a device uh, that will embed uh, some computing capability, some storage capability, and some application. And right now, people and companies are competing uh, for that device. Uh, so we have some uh, uh, IoT apps, some uh, set-top boxes, uh, some connected devices. And at point, we're working with, uh, with a company called uh, Nick City, which is releasing uh, uh, a smart hub, uh, but uh, with the shape of the speaker. So they're actually branding it and selling it as a connected speaker. But inside of it, they embed all the technologies uh, to actually manage your data and the connectivity with sensors and devices and so on. And I think it's a really good entry point uh, to enable this vision because it really focuses uh, about the, the context, the activity, the services. And, and to come back to the previous question, I think it's, it's really about uh, the, the service that are uh, uh, forward by the data and uh, the service that allows you to uh, make decisions that are important. Because in our daily life, we are constantly making decisions at every time. And of course we need data, but more and more we, we mainly uh, need knowledge derived from the data. Uh, so. I think it will start with this kind of device that offer uh, interaction and an experience. And then uh, maybe it will introduce the concept of uh, uh, personal tools to uh, manage your privacy, to manage the data flows, and so on. Uh, but I think it won't be the, the entry point. Okay. Is anyone in, uh, in the room familiar with the Boston Consulting Group Liberty, Liberty Global Report that was put together maybe three or four years ago? estimated the value of personal data in the hands of individuals or at least within their control uh, would create about a trillion, you know, they like those big numbers, a trillion euros of economic value by 
2020. People are familiar? No? No, some maybe? What do you guys think about that? So the, the question about data as a currency is quite interesting. What do you, what do you think from a design standpoint? Um, obviously, as a designer, you're trying to create business value by creating human value or organizational value by creating human value. What do you think of the concept as data as an actual currency? I think it is a currency actually for companies, but not for individuals because they, don't, the balance sheets, yeah. because they don't have access, they don't have the data to do anything with them and to use it as a currency. And actually this is a question that we have been asking at Fing. Uh, do people really want to use their data as a currency? But you have, uh, n there is no real clear uh, no answer really because it depends on the data. Some data are considered by individuals like very sensitive and they don't want to use it as a currency and to buy it or sell it or something like that. Typically, I, uh, health data are very sensitive and people do want to, to sell or to, uh, to use them as a currency. But other data are considered as um, less sensitive and of course people may consider it to use them as currency. But uh, personally, I don't have a clear, um, a clear answer and really it depends on the data we are talking about. Yeah, I'll, I'll offer like a personal opinion. Yeah. Uh, so I think it, to me it all comes down to what's going to happen in I think it's November 2018 when the new when the DP, GDPR actually comes into to place because yeah. how how the, the law going to be how's the law going to be interpreted like by the courts like what what's an active consent that's what what I keep coming back to like I, it says that you have to have an active consent but what, what does that actually constitute but I think if, if if this turns out the way that I hope it does, I, I kind of hope, you know, that it will, like, going back to a bit what, what Dr. Searles was talking about earlier, that it's all about, like, you want to participate in something. You don't really see it as much as, like, I'm giving you this, I want something in return. Mm -hmm. you, know, you kind of want to give it away, like, for greater good of some sort. I, I kind of hope that's, that's the utopia I'm hoping for. Like, you want to participate in, like, getting better health service, like, better roads. So it's a mechanism through which you can gain access. Yeah, I, I guess that's okay. that, that's what you say. For me, the data is not at all a, a currency. It's it's more of a, of a design material that you use uh, when you actually build uh, an experience or a service. And working for uh, a search engine company, uh, I would say that the data should be made available uh, freely, uh, so we can actually. Uh, uh, query this data to uh, uh, to uh, to get you the right information uh, really quickly, or also to build a customized experience. So I don't see I don't see transaction between uh, uh, between different companies or partners. I see uh, a question asked by people, uh, and then system actually querying uh, the sources to provide uh, the user with uh, an answer. Look more like a merchant than, than a currency, right? Yeah. That's, that's Look, it's very interesting. One of the things I was thinking whilst you were saying that, Pierre, was um, the idea of publicly discoverable, discoverable data combined with your personal information and the types of opportunities that that could create. And I know that something collectively, and JB just walked in, like we kind of think there's an opportunity there, absolutely. Um, but could you give us some thoughts on? not just from a design perspective, but kind of from a human value realization <coughs> perspective, what that might be able to do. Uh, you mean, well, yeah. Uh, so the, the first thing would be to actually, uh, uh, within the same technology, it should be able to uh, uh, search any kind of information. So whether it's a, a web page, uh, tweets, uh, news, uh, videos, uh, all your personal facts, and you don't really care about where it's uh, going to be located. It should be able to uh, to be displayed within the same uh, interface. Uh, in a way that uh, does not track you and does not share the data with uh, with partners. So that's that's one uh, one use case. The second one would be to actually, if you're willing to share. Uh, 
uh, your data with uh, some uh, some partners or institution or research lab. Uh, I think it would be really interesting to have this kind of uh, uh, data uh, for good uh, initiatives where you can decide uh, where uh, you could contribute uh, with your data. Uh, and the third use case would be to have some kind of uh, live and, and global maps or visualization of uh, what's going on at different scale, either it's uh, uh, in your neighborhood, in your cities, uh, uh, in your country. And uh, when I was working at uh, the Sensible City Lab at MIT, we worked a lot on visualization about the uh, dynamics, social dynamics of people within cities. Uh, uh, and we can really achieve something that's uh, informing for cities and users. Uh, but also uh, respectful of the, of the privacy of the user because we aggregate all of the data. And, and yeah. Johnny? Uh, Johnny Lincoln from Elisa. So we, we do, do quite a much uh, user research related to this area that how users see the value of their data, how much, <coughs> how much do they want benefits or what kind of benefits related to which kind of data. And for example, uh, two years ago we launched a new product uh, related to our uh, mobile subscription that uh, if, you, if you provide us the marketing agreement, we give you one euro discount. And that, that, create quite, that became quite a success. So it was a kind of you know, setting value for the marketing agreement. As a man money, so you can pay. If you pay more, you don't, you don't. We don't collect any information of yours, and we don't do anything with that. And some people react that, but not all. And so we needed something else. And we, we, in the end, when we after research, we we suggested this and that um, with the co-creation processes to the to the end users and. Finally, we found that there is always those people who want better services, and it's all—it's not a question of money at all. That if, if, and so, by showing them that if if you allow us to to, to use your data in, in in the services, the the page that you you, for example, the the opening page, the home page of our services would look like this. So we illustrated the page that how it looks if we can, you know, personalize all the content based on your your usage or information. And suddenly great amount of those people who didn't react to the discount reacted to this benefit uh, better service benefit. So it's it's not it's not one way or another, but there is you, we had to find several different ways to, to, to go uh, negotiate with the end user what we can do and what's the benefit of unfortunately. It makes a lot of sense. That's mm. what, what people that's are the, doing. And it's small things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very small things. And that's uh, what these people from uh, the group from Princeton is what is doing. Uh, they just making getting the sun technology to let people see how things would change. Mm. They, right. I have to see it, uh, how, how they tend to change if, if they make more or less data with type of data. I think there's a lot of, a lot of things to actually know which kind of, I think that for the thing is not just the amount of data, which kind of data they are willing to actually to, to share and in, in, in response to some other better or different service. And I don't think this is very uniform. I think that it depends very much on different types of populations. But, but again, I would imagine that it really also depends on, on and well enough user trust that you're only going to use the data for like to get enhanced service if that's the only thing that that's me providing the data will actually give me. Well, then I'm more than willing to do it. But if that also means that, oh, by the way, we're just going to sell it off to this data broker here, I, I definitely wouldn't want to do it. So I think it's all about separating purposes from commissions. And for, for that, there could be also extra price. Okay, can, can we sell this information and what do you get from that? Well, sell in, well, I would personally never sell my information because yeah, I think for the end users. There would be people who would. There would be really Look, and there's, there's definitely products in market, DataCoup and stuff like that yeah. in the US that 
you know, they're long on that. That's what they think is the opportunity. And look, we're here collectively because we're still trying to figure out this market. You know, that might be the right model. Mads privacy assistant might be the right model. At, at this stage, we, we don't know. We have a yeah. bunch of hypotheses and we're out iteratively testing them. And, and, and now, now we are uh, dealing with, the, we, are, we are going to the health, health uh, business in our company and, and we are looking for the pricing models and, and uh, ecosystems where people perhaps are willing to pay when we analyze and collect their data. So it's not anymore that we pay for them that we get the data, but they pay for us because they they get an uh, understanding and feeling that they will be getting better, you know, analysis and services out of the data. So it's, it's context for all. That's a comment. The problem that I think with this model is that it's not that people want to get discount if they offer the data. It's that if they don't offer the, the data, they pay more. Yeah. So they are forced. So oh, they're kind of free. forced. Okay. Yeah, they pay more. Yeah, but there is the price. So it's always the, it's a, there is the price that, that your your uh, we can put it in a way that this is the price if if not the, the data is not uh, used. But how would you then form the price that we use today? Isn't that exactly the thing that your data has the value? We are ready to pay for it. The price is here. You get it. It's a way of marketing it, but I see it differently. I see it from an otherwise perspective. And then the risk of being a profile, people leaving people aside. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a concrete example of someone, uh, a concrete person I know, who uh, wants to ask for a credit in a bank. The difference is not a health service, the difference is in the application. So I want to ask for a credit in a bank. He went there and he said, Oh, sorry, we cannot use your credit because we don't have enough data. It's not even that the data is bad. Well, the assurance isn't high enough, yeah. Yeah, they, didn't, they, didn't, they couldn't find any data about him, so they couldn't profile him. That's why he was excluded from service. And to pile on what you were just saying, uh, the risk is that it turns into a, an opportunity for more profit. So we see this in the US, for example, with broadband services, you get to pay a certain amount, you know, if you accept to be tracked or like deep packet inspection, then you pay an extra forty dollars in a per month or whatever that is. I think George you know this better than I, but yeah. whatever like extraordinary you know increase uh, increase price you know, if, if you if you don't want to be inspected. So basically all of a sudden you have to pay an extraordinary amount of money. Yeah. To keep your price, uh, that's so you know from a this is the price, and then we you know, we have to we have to recoup the price. We turns into an opportunity for more profit, and that's you know with with the uh, with the user being you know, the, the one that loses. Yeah. It's a balancing act, right? Well, <coughs> enter look, enterprises need to make money, and I think that's the perspective that you at, at the moment the balance <laughs> is like this, you know, and and again that's kind of why we're here. Yes. Um, <coughs> there, there's plenty of technologies out there that are being used that can that already are being used to sell your data out there for say advertising that can be easily turned around. For instance, real time bidding as it exists now in the advertising market. <coughs> if I as an individual, so the, the question about using your data for uh, just the, it's all a context question. So like I'm willing to give my data out there if I'm gonna buy a Hawaiian vacation. I'm willing to say that, and once I'm willing to say that, I become a qualified lead, which is a much better hit ratio for somebody who's going to market to me. So if the real-time bidding uh, mechanism that's right now used to put, because I'm browsing for vacations, it's it just put out there to sell for you know a fraction of a penny, what if I, I declare myself, I'm looking for this, then that has a much higher value. Now what I want to do is I want to split it with whoever it is because I don't I don't even care about getting, you know, so maybe it's a fifty dollar lead because it if I am a truly a buyer in the market, but I want a discount on it. And also I don't want anybody to know who I am. I just want you to know this is a person with real value, with real dollars who wants to buy two weeks in Hawaii. Who who has something like that to to bid? So if we are a participant in a way when it's something that we really want. So that's the context of that, but it's a, it's about the different contexts. Whether you're talking healthcare, it's like a totally different thing. And you may, I mean, people with 
life-threatening diseases, they're the first ones to put their hand up and say, I'm going to give all my data because it might cause, there might be a cure out there. So again, it, when we just say your data and whether it's worth anything, it's like, for what? You know? yeah, I, th I think that it comes, again, a bit back to the whole concept of purpose. Like, you kind of need to know what the data is actually right. being used for. And, yeah. I'm just going to put it out there and say that's a really strong point to finish on. But maybe something to, to think about as we all go away from this and something that I've been mulling over as you've all been speaking. Um, Mad said, you know, we're, we've been in the wild, wild west and I, I totally agree. Um, the point at which Facebook came to market, you know, they managed to connect 1.6 billion people. They didn't manage to rethink business model. Um, so given that we're trying to move out of the wild, wild west and we're trying to, you know, shift the balance a little bit. What is the greatest design challenge that we now have that we're not playing in the wild, wild west anymore? And I think that will only be truly realized or truly visible for designers once GDPR is in full force, probably going to be sorted out in the courts of law. But that's something to walk away with. What, what is the biggest challenge? And, you know, I would sort of say to everyone, like, if there is a mechanism through which um, the group of us that are interested in solving these design challenges in a way that is GDPR compatible, we can't be GDPR compliant because it's not real yet, but GDPR compatible potentially, that is privacy by design, that is human centric, it'd be great to continue this discussion. Thanks to the speakers. Thank you.